So there's this scene in, uh, I think it's in Iron Man 1, where Tony Stark is working on the design for the suit and he's looking at the computer screen and he tells Jarvis to just throw on some hot rod red and and manufacture one uh, while he sits back and, and has a drink. And it, that it always struck me as, well, not just the fact that it's fantasy, but the uh, I thought it was really cool, but I also, you know, the, the, the tools that we use to manufacture things have limitations and those limitations aren't reflected in the design because they're not limitations of the design they're limitations of the tool that's that's trying to realize that design for instance you can't cut a square corner with a round tool uh, so you have to the, the the machinist has to make decisions and choices about what to do do you want to cut more material than is in the design in order that you remove everything at the corner or do you want to leave some material behind so that you don't gouge the actual model uh, neither one is perfect it's just the consequence of you know trying to cut a square corner with a round tool so the way that we handle issues like this real world limitations of tools or consequences of the machining process the way we do that in in FreeCAD is with a, uh, a dress up to the path and uh, so I'm gonna uh, show a couple of examples of what I'm talking about um, let's look at something like uh, uh, if I was say cutting this uh, uh, inside corner here the uh, um, you know clearly a round cutter in here can't get all the way into this this tight corner so it's going to have to either overcut by going past uh, in this direction or it's going to have to come up jog over and then continue or it's going to have to come up and then kind of jog at an angle and then back out and continue in order to fully clear this um, so corners like this that you know this might be necessary if you were gonna uh, nest this part together with another one like it at a right angle so that they they mate together uh, any material you left in here would prevent these surfaces from touching and so you'd want to clear it all the way out but you know um, some of those cuts are better than others uh, you know if you cut in this direction uh, it's gonna one piece of material is gonna hide the overcut from the other one um, so that's one kind of limitation. Uh, you could also imagine that if I had this whole piece of stock mounted on the table uh, and then I'm, I'm cutting it out, well, when it finishes the profile at the end, this inner piece is going to be no longer connected to the surrounding stock, and so it's going to vibrate loose, um, possibly slide into the cutter and gouge the model someplace, or fly off and damage the machine or the operator. And so what we'd want to do is is leave a little bit of material behind in a few places, you know, here and here and here to hold the the part in place. And then after it's finished, we can take the part and the stock out as one and cut these little pieces by hand and file off any rem remaining material. And we call that a, a holding tab or a holding tag. Now, you know... It, having a holding tag wouldn't be necessary if I was cutting this on a laser cutter uh, because the la the part wouldn't receive any lateral force on it and so it would just stay put on the table uh, same thing with a plasma cutter or something like that or a water jet but on a mill uh, I would definitely need holding tabs to hold it in place uh, so the way that uh, this works is uh, I've already got a uh, uh, the operation here obviously and if I'm gonna select the operation and click on path dress up uh, let's first do the dog bone dress up this is going to add our corners and as I zoom in you can see that a little additional movement was put in here so that as the tool comes along hits this point it's going to jog into the corner just far enough to finish clearing out the remaining material here and then it backs out again uh, now this is going to over gouge the material in this area as well it's going to um, you know, we'll end up with a what kind of looks like a dog bone uh, or the kind of the swelled end of the uh, of the path, uh, but that's the desired effect. If we looking at the uh, at the tree, you'll see that my dog bone dress up was added and it nested the contour operation underneath it. I can still click onto the contour and change any uh, any properties of it, but I can also click into the dog bone dress up and I and have a new set of properties here related just to that. So I can change the style if I want this to go 
Uh, well, let's see, we'll go that direction. Um, and I can, uh, I can change the, uh, uh, the different style of the incision and I can pick and choose uh, which of the corners that it detected that uh, that I wanted to actually cut so there may be places where I want the the this dress up to be applied and others where I don't and I have the option of choosing that here now dress up uh, operations can also be stacked so um, in, in this case I might want both the uh, the dog bone corner but I also want the holding tags so I just select the dog bone here and then apply uh, we'll say uh, the tag dress up and you'll see that I get these uh, green indicator markers for where the tags are going to be placed and I can again pick and choose if I don't want them all I can turn some of them off uh, I think uh, I don't need uh, that one there and uh, and if I wanted to I can add additional ones manually and I can change the number uh, I also have control over the width of the uh, of the tag and the height and the angle let's go ahead and apply this and you can see what that looks like in the path I'm going to rotate my model and zoom in and you'll see that the uh, the cutter proceeds along to the point of the holding tag and then jumps up to a height and then back down and each of the other paths follows that as well so it leave a little bit of material behind here and you have control over the shape of the material that's left um, and the idea is to to leave as little material as necessary to hold the part in place uh, and uh, uh, but still make it easy enough to clean up the part afterwards now looking at the uh, tree you'll see that uh, it just nested everything uh, cleanly underneath and you can do the same thing if you wanted to remove it you can select a, a dress up and delete it and it'll place everything back the way it was <clears throat> so the dress ups that we have right now uh, there's about five of them the dog bone and the tag we talked about uh, drag knife is a uh, uh, a an operation or a dress up that uh, handles a uh, a drag knife which cuts um, thin stock material and it does it by uh, dragging a pivoting knife around behind the spindle and the knife point is usually offset from the spindle center by some amount and when it gets to a, a corner it, it can't make a, a hard 90 degree corner because the uh, the turn on that would uh, uh, break the tip of the knife and so it has to do a corner action where it it actually cuts a little bit farther then it lifts up and pivots around the point and then plunges back down again um, I've actually done videos on all of these dress ups in more detail uh, and I'll put some of those links in the uh, video description below um, the uh, uh, lead in and out is uh, if you don't want your cutter to plunge directly along the side of the the model a lead in is nice because it'll it'll start outside the model and then roll in uh, and that that's can be helpful ramp entry is used if your cutter can't plunge directly uh, into the material so if you have a larger end mill for instance the uh, cutting surfaces on the end mill are at the edge and the center of the cutter doesn't have any cutting surfaces so it usually can't plunge straight down in it needs to uh, ramp down in or spiral in on a helix uh, the ramp entry uh, is useful for that kind of a cut as well and it can be useful uh, especially if you're plunging into uh, uh, to clear a pocket in the middle of a, of a part the ramp entry is uh, useful there there'll be more dress ups in the future the uh, um, I'm already aware of a couple things like uh, I've been told that plasma cutters often want to uh, preheat the material before they start the cut uh, so they want the 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 uh, uh, cutting head to move into position and then circle for a couple of seconds before 
uh, descending to its cut depth and going to full power uh, to preheat the material to make the penetration easier. That's one that I'm aware of now. Uh, if you're aware of other kinds of dress-ups like this, the, uh, please you know, let, let me know either in the comments or better yet out on the FreeCAD forum. Uh, the, the code for implementing these things is not terribly difficult uh, and I'm happy to either help with or, uh, um, uh, or do it if it's going to be a, a dress-up that has general applicability to the rest of the community. Uh, anyway, I hope that's helpful, and uh, please let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks.